<sighs> Another long day, but more food for thought. All right. Uh, just shot once again, uh, 70 meters. For those of you who don't know metric, take the first number of the distance, add it to the second number of the distance, and that's what it is in yards. So 70 meters is seven. Move the seven behind, 77 yards. 90 meters, 99 yards. 20 meters, well, 22 yards, right? So, all right, food for thought for the weekend. I want you guys to think about this. Keep an open mind and let me walk you through my philosophy, okay? This is my personal philosophy. So today I did a poll and I think it's pretty dang fair to say out of that poll, I asked you, if you can only be struck once, would you rather have this go one strike in and out or would you rather get hit with that? Guess what everyone picked? Everyone picked that guy. So the analogy is small cut, fixed blade broadhead, those of you who are only seeking pass-throughs versus I elect trauma. Now this is specific to mechanical heads. Now I wanna say up front, listen, there's certain people that don't qualify for mechanical heads. If you're shooting, honestly, if, if you're shooting anything bigger than uh, small game or medium game, I would say white tail or larger. If you're 50 pounds or less, don't even consider it. If you're in the 50 to 60 range, you probably do need a heavy arrow to push that through. However, if you're like most people who are shooting, honestly, a, a uh, I would say a middle of the road arrow for this example, this is, uh, these are actually Sonics out of the box. Um, and these are, right now they're right at about 510 grains. Uh, it's a 250 with a 75 grain up front. And once it has a light, it knocks about just over five. Okay, so here's what I wanted to, to say in regards to those who think an expandable one who talk about pass-through it's my experience with pass-throughs do i like pass-throughs yes elevated positions nice to have blood right away however what i really think about is does the trauma is that going to be fatal and for the most part Yes, it is. Now, in regards to the really heavy arrow shooters and people who are all worried about bone, here's, here's what I did for you. Anything in that white, you don't want to hit with most arrows, okay, on an elk, okay, where that front arm comes up and that elbow connects. You got that big elbow knot and where the arm bone goes up to meet the scapula, the bottom of the scapula plate, you're gonna punch through from the high ridge up, you're not. Spine, also not. So out of this target, right? 90% of this target is not something that I would consider fatal even if I hit it, right? So then my option is, okay, well, do I want a quartering two? Not really on an elk, you really don't. You don't want a quartering two, okay? so. Think about this in regards to how extreme you go with your arrow's weight or your broadhead choice only based on bone matter. It's a very small percentage of the overall target. The reality is where you want to hit, which this is why they call it the golden triangle. Honestly, and on an elk, the lungs even come a little bit further back. You have a ridiculous amount of stuff that most arrows and most modern compound equipment are going to be more than adequate for but what i found even if the arrow doesn't pass through and this is something i'm actually going to go over in another series where i review my hunting footage with you i actually love the arrow to 
stop and especially if I can get it to stop or break the offside shoulder or the offside leg and it stops there. Why? Okay, there's a couple things here and I'm actually gonna be doing a podcast uh, with Dr. Peter Atia coming up here pretty soon where we talk about the theoretical theory that if you have one hole into a single lung shot, which I honestly single lung shots are pretty dang, pretty dang common, single lung shots, sometimes with the liver, but yes, yeah, single lung shots, depending on the angle. If you're shooting from a tree stand, you might only get one, right? Well, if that, if that lung's deflated and building pressure inside that cavity, and that cavity has the ability for the air to just come in and go out, then the working lung is going to work. If that cavity then has something that's clogging the hole and all the internal bleeding and the pressure inside there can theoretically stop that heart, okay? So I've had very, very good luck when I can see an arrow hits anywhere in that golden triangle and it's a big cut head and it's issuing literally tomahawk trauma. Like none of you wanted to get hit with this regardless of how far it went in. It's just really hard to stop that blood. When that cut gets that big, it's, it takes longer to clot, takes longer to seal up. In my opinion, I've had tremendous success with that. But what I want you to think about, regardless of your setup, when people say, well, I want to be able to shoot through bone. I personally want to shoot soft spots. I aim for the soft spots. I'm out here literally practicing and training and building my equipment so that I am literally going out to train for the soft spots. Now, certainly if I had a, a bad error and I hit far forward, am I wanting to punch through that? Sure. But the reality is I'm way more likely to stay inside of my black square, let alone, which I call the middle middle of the golden triangle. I'm more likely to stay in that when I'm shooting a head that I can control, a head that is accurate, and a projectile that's fast. And this, this, all this stuff that you see here, which is the danger zone, if that danger zone is moving because that animal is reacting and able to react more to a slower arrow, then certainly you're going to run the risk of colliding with that. But what I tell people is I'm not out here, you know, if someone someone tells you you have a 1% chance of getting hit by lightning. I think it's way less than that, but I'm just saying it do, most people you included are still going to go outside, right? You're still going to go hunting. So I'm not sitting here sweating the details of the 10%. I'm being a hundred percent confident in the 90% because for me, a large cut expandable inside of that white box, that is the head I want. And I'm not worried if it passes through. Listen, if that thing sticks in there and it hits that opposite side and it runs off and I'm able to visually see confirmation of my hit, one, it allows me to track better, it allows me to time it better, it allows me to approach it better. Two, they are gonna hurt more and they're gonna bed down and they're gonna not go as far when that happens. So listen, the broadhead debate, we're gonna do it for a lifetime, right? But I just want you all to think about these little things, because these are the things that I consider when you ask me the why, why do you shoot this? Why do you shoot that? Because I'm shooting for the soft spots. I'm not playing, I'm not playing the densest bone on an elk where I quite frankly on an elk or a moose, I have seen bullets get stopped by those bones that I've drawn. So the last thing I want to do is put an arrow in that spot or more importantly, build an arrow and tailor my entire setup around the possibility of a low percentage impact. I'm playing the big game and that's what I'm doing. So when I ask you that question today, what would you rather get hit by? I was simply trying to 
think have you think super common sense and super logically of this thing right here getting hit four to six inches into my chest that thing is going to do some serious damage we're certainly this thing going all the way through and out like a fillet knife is just not going to have the trauma for me trauma is what has added to my success as a bow hunter and i can tell you last year out of the big basket of things that i shot two moose four elk four two muleys 10 white tails, two black bears, one at a one at a super long distance. I was shooting a 539 grain arrow out of a 74 pound bow. And I was shooting a, a two and honestly with the cut, probably more of a two and a half inch cut. Uh, and my arrows flew great. The animals didn't go far. I was a hundred percent on recoveries but I was also 0% at aiming at any of that. Have a good weekend, everybody.